Good morning and thank you for being with us. This is Khalil Hashem, editor of Michigan.com, a digital business magazine serving the Arab American communities in Michigan. We provide business and real estate news, loan and lending information, support to small businesses, and much more. Visit us at yammichigan.com. This show is brought to you in cooperation between yammichigan.com and uh, U.S. Arab Radio. We thank the leader and the founder of U.S. Arab Radio, Layla Husni, for providing us this beautiful opportunity to be with you. It's a beautiful summer day. And we couldn't be happier. It's going to start with about 54 degrees and it's going to reach the 90, uh, the 80s, not the 90s. We don't need 90s. The 80s, it's a beautiful day. Enjoy it. On behalf of US Arab Radio, we wish you the best of time, peace, and happiness. We thank you for your listening. You know, our community is, um, before I say that, I just want to say today is September 1st. Today is my birthday. So I'll be 150 years old. So, <laughs> so it is my birthday and I thank you for uh, being with us. This is a special day for me. So, um, you know, our, our community is growing and growing fast. We have, but, you know, we have always complained. Well, before I say that, you know, we've done a really good job. We have lawyers, we have people in the House of Representatives, U.S. House of Representatives, we have people running for Congress. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have people across a lot of spectrum, but we continue to complain that the government does not pay a lot of attention to us and they don't give us, you know, more jobs and, 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 uh, you know, and, and we don't really, but the problem is we don't participate as much, you know, a few, few weeks ago, the American Human, uh, Human Rights Council and the ICD Islamic Center of Detroit sponsored a job fair bringing in more than 20 local, state, and, and federal agencies to provide jobs. And, uh, you know, from what I heard, well, before I told you what I heard, with us this morning is the Executive Director of the American Human Rights Council, uh, Ahmad Hamad. Good morning, and thank you for being with us. Well, uh, good morning, uh, Khalil. Uh, thank you, and... Uh... Always a pleasure being with you and happy birthday. Uh, I know you, you are younger another year, another <laughs> year. Uh, hey, uh, numbers don't mean anything unless we, when you wake up in the morning and you can't move, then then they, they mean something. But right now, you know, they don't mean anything. Thank God. I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for being with us. And, and thank you for all you do to serve this community. So you put together this this uh, this job fair tell us a little bit about it how did it go who came in and 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 really you know what was uh, the what 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 happened there well uh, first uh, um, you know the job fair or the career day uh, was uh, uh, a planned event uh, where uh, we as the American Human Rights Council and the Islamic Center of Detroit uh, decided to uh, put it together as uh, a resource uh, for all uh, community members who are interested in uh, different jobs uh, with different federal uh, agencies, law enforcement, police, and state agencies. And I think the uh, job fair that we held on August 24 last week uh, was very impressive. Uh, one, uh, we had almost uh, 34 uh, uh, federal and state and local agencies. It was a true uh, impressive show of um, agencies, of diverse agencies, different agencies uh, that wanted to offer uh, job opportunities uh, to everyone, uh, to anyone who is interested in joining the force. Like, for example, um, we even had the U.S. Attorney Office trying to recruit lawyers uh, to be part of the U.S. Attorney Department of Justice uh, legal network. We had, uh, 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 I would say, all the federal agencies from the FBI to CBP to TSA, Secret Service, DEA, ATF. Uh, we had the U.S. Postal uh, inspector uh, service. Uh, we had uh, the U.S. Army and the uh, Army uh, National Guard of uh, Michigan. 
Uh, we had the Secretary of State. We had the Michigan Department of Corrections. Uh, we had almost everyone, everyone. And other, actually, the space was limited because uh, if we would have had a bigger space, I think we would have uh, had maybe close to 50. The interest was high. And that's a testimonial to um, what you just noted at the beginning of the program that government agencies uh, are uh, offering um, these uh, jobs to those who are interested. Definitely, this domain is not, a pro is, is not of interest maybe to everyone, but there are a chunk of people who uh, desire these jobs. Like, for example, when we talk about uh, the domain of elections, the uh, domain being part of the electoral process, uh, this is part of uh, our reality as Arab Americans, as Muslim Americans, as an integral part of this society and this great nation. So I would say uh, it was a landmark event. It was the first of its kind. Definitely it wasn't new in nature because Khalil, if you call, if you rec if you go back um, to the time of, nation of September 11, uh, national tragedy, which we're close to its anniversary, uh, you recall that after that, there were uh, a mood of open engagement. And we had such fairs and approaches uh, for recruitment. Uh, definitely, I cannot deny that there are some people who are against this or who have serious reservations about that. Uh, like we had some criticism why to have the army, why to recruit to the army. Uh, some had some concerns, why do we have to have the intelligence? Uh, we respect these views, we disagree with it. We're part of this makeup and it's, uh, it's a matter of a choice uh, to each one. Nobody is in a business to impose or force. Uh, and I know for a fact that many candidates who used to apply for jobs, uh, uh, with these agencies, they used to face a, a true difficulty getting it through. Because as you know, Khalil, nowadays, when you apply for a job, you have to go through the website. You have to, it's a very technical process, very mute yeah. process. Sometimes you have questions, you're not able to find somebody, a, a person that could answer your concerns or answer your questions to guide you through it. And this job fair that we had on August 24, it was a golden opportunity for anyone to come, inquire, learn, explore, and then decide. Uh, and I think uh, the event was great. And I think the attendance um, was not bad. It, it, it could have been better. Uh, like when we bring like 34 major uh, uh, local, state, and federal agency, you only expect that people um, will show more interest in that. Now, uh, I don't claim that uh, maybe everybody knew about it, you know, that uh, we live in a world that uh, it jammed with the news, jammed with announcement, jammed, jammed. So we did our part. I think I think we paved the way for future events. And I call upon um, those who are interested uh, those who are interested, and I keep saying those who are interested, because I know not everyone, not all are interested in this. Those who are interested, they have a golden opportunity. I think the agencies at large um, uh, showed uh, uh, goodwill and showed uh, um, uh, 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 that they have opportunities for those who uh, may be interested uh, in joining the force. It sounded like... Uh... Uh, these agencies have been eager for our community to participate. I agree with you. I think when we started uh, uh, planning the event, uh, <clears throat> to tell you the truth, uh, it, it exceeded our expectation that the response from all agencies was overwhelming. Um, like uh, uh, we even received calls uh, to join uh, after the deadline. Uh, we tried to accommodate, but the space as good as it is, as spacious as it is, it's not going to fit uh, more than the 34 uh, that we had to limit ourselves to. So I, I would say, yes, uh, um, uh, the agencies uh, at large, local and state and national, 
they strive for um, recruiting and they have uh, good opportunities who are interested in these uh, domains. Like for example, uh, look, we have, let's say, uh, the sheriff department from Genesee County. It's like two hours and a half, three hours from Dearborn or Detroit, and they were there. You have the Washington County uh, Sheriff Department. Uh, so uh, when you look at these entities and how far they came to join, that 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 tells you something. That tells you something that these agencies, uh, they are interested in hiring Arab Americans, Muslim Americans in particular. They want to diverse uh, their working teams, their working force, and they uh, were ready and they spent the whole day Actually, it was like even the recruiters, even these agencies, the police departments from Detroit, Dearborn, Ancaster, Garden City, Beverly Hills, uh, Royal Oak, Oak Park, Ancaster, uh, Michigan State Police, name it, they were there. Uh, so you look around and you see like a true festival of Jaffer uh, and all are uh, trying to offer uh, and compete uh, to recruit. And one interesting point that uh, some recruiters, even from different agencies, they start re to recruit each other with, <laughs> with offering better opportunities. And, and to, the, to all of them who were there, believe it or not, they had fun because most of them, uh, they didn't know each other. They never uh, been under one roof together. So to bring 34 uh, uh, major agencies from... Um, all walks of life and beyond uh, limitation to the geographic uh, uh, boundaries, I think that speaks volume. Also, to bring them to uh, an Islamic center, Islamic institute, uh, to, to bring them to an Islamic uh, uh, faith-based uh, center, uh, it speaks volume because when they come to the mosque or they come to the Islamic center, uh, many of them, they were wondering and they were asking questions, even to learn about uh, Islam, about uh, the culture. And I would say the, the Islamic Center of Detroit uh, were very gracious with their hospitality, making sure that uh, all of these guests, all of these agencies and their teams be treated well by, you know, offering the, the uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, you know, Arab uh, Muslim uh, uh, hospitality mm -hmm. uh, and warm uh, welcome. And I'm sure that uh, if this fair were to be held at any other mosque uh, of our community in Dearborn or Detroit or across Michigan, they will do the same. So mm -hmm. I hear urge, them, urge our uh, uh, partners in the community to take notice of this fair in a positive way and try to uh, uh, copy the event, try to uh, organize such an event if they feel it can be of uh, value uh, sure. to their prospective communities. I know that uh, when we talk about recruitment uh, for uh, federal agencies, and I'm not here uh, to play the role of recruiter, that's not my job. You know, uh, as a human rights organization, uh, on continuous basis or ongoing basis, we're on a different uh, side and we don't get eye to eye on many issues, many practices, et cetera. However, that doesn't take away that these are our government agencies. These are our uh, first responders agencies. This is our, uh, these are the people who are in charge of our safety and security and the safety of our society. So we leave politics aside. And we always, you know, many people came to me and say, hey, we want these agencies to recruit, uh, not to recruit informants. And I said, funny, they are not here to recruit informants. <laughs> That's <laughs> the purpose. They're here to recruit professional uh, folks who can work and join the force. And that adds a value when you see Arab Americans and Muslim Americans part of these agencies, part of these police force. Now you look around Khalil and you see uh, Arab American and Muslim American officers are all over. So that's, that's normal. That's normal. Yeah. And that should be. I know this is not the cup of cake to everyone, but there are people who are passionate about it. And it's only normal for us to be part of uh, every makeup uh, that uh, uh, that 
help us uh, be part of the uh, uh, American lifestyle and, and the American dream and the future of this uh, nation. I think when we have Arab Americans and Muslim Americans join any department, join any force, um, elected wise or uh, employment wise, they are they become a great asset, and they help to correct the direction. They bring sensitivity. They bring cultural awareness. Uh, this is the right way to be. Now, uh, I know that many, regardless of what you say, uh, they are not going to uh, uh, be convinced or change their uh, views about it. That's fine. Yeah. So yeah. we cannot satisfy, and uh, and this is not uh, uh, this is not a product that uh, could be appealing to everyone, but it, it is appealing to a certain chunk of our uh, young and youth who desire to be part. Uh, and rightly so, of government agencies' jobs. What we're going to do, Imad, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back to continue this really good discussion because we want to talk about we don't want to be on the sideline anymore. This community has really to be involved. Please stay tuned. Life for Relief and Development has now been rated as one of the best charities for humanitarian aid. Life's humanitarian projects span the globe, and Life is celebrating its 30th anniversary of providing essential life-saving aid to people and communities in 36 countries, regardless of race, color, religion, or cultural background. Where there is life, there is hope. And when disaster occurs here or around the world, including being one of the first responders to the Turkey-Syria earthquake crisis, Life for Relief and Development rushes in to provide food, medical aid, and shelter to those in need. We are looking to help the earthquake victims, and we take 0% overhead on emergency donations. So please help improve these efforts. Learn more about our involvement to help the helpless and bring hope where it's needed most. And make your tax-deductible donation to Life for Relief and Development now at lifeusa.org or call 248-424-7493. That's 248-424-7493. Get ready for an amazing experience at Ishtar Restaurant on 15 Mile Road in Sterling Heights. Enjoy excellent hospitality from owners Ali al-Baghdadi and Fatty Bottom serving the best in Mediterranean food. Try Chef Ali al-Baghdadi's famous shawarma, the best Iraqi grills and food, and the best Arabic and international dishes. Dine in our authentic atmosphere or take out. Call 586-698-2585 or check us out on Facebook. Ishtar Restaurant practices all CDC guidelines and is open every day, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Have an amazing experience today at Ishtar Restaurant, 3625 15 Mile Road, Sterling Heights. Were you recently at the emergency room, urgent care, or at your doctor's office being told you need a hand, wrist, or elbow specialist? At the Katranjing Hand Center, we offer the latest techniques in hand, wrist, and elbow care. From sports injuries to work injuries to everyday hand, wrist, and elbow problems, the specialists at Katranjing Hand Center are here to get you back on track. Call us in Troy today at 248-869-4263 or visit us at katranjinghandcenter.com to schedule your appointment today. هل تلقى أطفالكم أحدث نسخة من لقاح كوفيد-19؟ لقد تم لغاية اليوم تطعيم أكثر من 5.5 مليار شخص بلقاح كوفيد-19 وأثبتت النتائج أن اللقاحات كانت فعالة حيث قام الخبراء حول العالم بإجراء الاختبارات اللازمة ليكون اللقاح آمناً وفعالاً اللقاح لا يحميكم أنتم وعائلتكم فقط بل يحمي المجتمع كله قوموا بواجبكم من خلال التحدث إلى مقدمي الخدمات الصحية أو زيارة michigan.gov slash kids covid vaccine رسالة من وزارة الصحة والخدمات الإنسانية في ميشيغان Welcome back and thank you for being with us. Uh, we're talking to Imad Hamad, Executive Director of the Human Rights American Human Rights Council. Um, again, Imad, I just uh, when 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 you mention all of these agencies, this this has been really tremendous work, and I want to thank you for for really putting it together. Um, you know, we I don't think there is one time that I sat down with a group of people in this community and they did not complain about the government does not pay attention to us. So how can we change that? How can we change that mindset? And is it really time for us to 
you know, we don't want to be on the sideline. We want to be part of the American system. We're Americans and we need to be part of that American system. How can we change this mindset? Well, this is an ongoing process. And I, I think uh, you're right that uh, it's only natural and only normal uh, for us as Arab Americans, as Muslim Americans, as any American to be part of the mix, to be part of uh, the process, to be part of the system. Um, uh, now, uh, the system provided choices and everyone uh, seek the choice they desire or the choice of their interest. I, I think this is part of the ongoing debate. Uh, I think we're doing great, actually. I think uh, if we go back and you recall that, that time, Khalil, that people were more uh, stiff about it, more rigid about it to sure, accept sure. it. Uh, and they were more uh, conservative about it. Nowadays, I think it's moving forward. It's opening up. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, we reach a situation or will, we will ever reach that situation that maybe everybody can be on the same page. It's not going to be uh, the reality, but I think the domain uh, part of it, I think uh, the domain part of our community uh, is, is moving in that direction, especially the, the new generation. Uh, the youth, the young, the newly graduates, those who um, tap to the American way of living and they see themselves uh, an integral part of uh, of the makeup. They don't see themselves as outsiders mm -hmm. or as they like to call us voters. Uh, <laughs> so I think we passed that stage. Yeah, voters' time is being limited and we are dealing with a new era, new uh, reality. Now, again, when it comes to government at large and government agencies, especially intelligence or the army or what have you, people, many, many people or some people uh, judge them by the nature of the challenges that uh, they witness or they see or they read about. Uh, so it, it is a legitimate, uh, uh, valid uh, uh, point that this needs to be in consideration, but uh, this is not. This should not be a reason uh, to be a block or to be a barrier. On the contrary, that should be a motive and incentive to change it. And in order to change it, you cannot change it while uh, uh, you are far or you are not being part of uh, the mix. You cannot change it by just uh, uh, expressing views or complaints uh, or objections or reservations or what have you. You want to change it, you, you need to be part of it. You need to be insider, not outsider. And I think uh, agencies at large, we, we see great uh, changes. We, we, we see drastic changes. They are opening up. They, they, they are welcoming. They're realizing the value of the uh, diverse makeup of their teams. They see the value how when they have um, you know, a diverse uh, uh, workforce, uh, uh, they, they become more effective, uh, more productive. It's, it's, a, it's an adding value. So they are not doing us a favor. They are not doing anyone a favor. Sure. This is needed. This is essential. This is vital. Um, if you look at the nature of the challenges that are facing uh, our society here, our nation here, uh, as well as the world, you see it only normal. It, it become a valuable resource uh, to government agencies, to government departments, uh, to have uh, a force that is reflective of its uh, prospective communities and stakeholders they serve. Look what happened on uh, September 11, I recall. Um, you know how uh, the government was jammed with security concerns, with uh, millions of uh, security screening requests and a checklist and this. And one important call um, the government needed at that time is to help with the translation, to help with the interpretations, sure, sure. To, help to understand. Uh, and, and the community at that time uh, did uh, uh, do the, its part and helped and assisted. And its role was vital to combat terrorism on domestic level and the international level. 
So nothing is a change here. Actually, I think we move forward. If we go back uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, now mm -hmm. you're talking about a different reality. So uh, you see our uh, young, our folks uh, tapping to be part of uh, different public service uh, post in the local, state, and federal. And that's, uh, that's moving forward. And I think uh, this is another set that complements it and completes it. So we cannot, like, uh, there, there's going to be um, uh, different choices how to serve, different choices how to be part of the makeup, uh, different choices how to secure a solid, secure job. And you know what? Uh, uh, one interesting observation uh, uh, during the job fair, and I think uh, you know it because you're in, in, in business and you follow up the state of economy. Everybody is hiring, but not as many people willing to work or coming to apply for work. Sure, sure. And everywhere you go, you see the sign saying help wanted, hiring, trying to compete, to hire, to hire, to hire. And when you talk to them, businesses, private, public, government, they tell you the percentage of people applying is not as much, it's limited. And everybody is wondering why. Nobody is given a, a, a satisfactory response to that because if you look around at the state of economy, you only uh, uh, think how, how, how people are living, how they are surviving if they are not seeking um, solid and uh, effective uh, employment. Yeah, so, where do they get the money from? I have no idea. I, I think even <laughs> recruiters, even agencies, they say, hey, listen, um, we have these great opportunities for young people, for a newly graduate. And, uh, and the number of people come on to express interest or to apply is limited. Like uh, one unique feature in this uh, job fair, uh, I was like, for the first time, uh, I saw the uh, Michigan um, uh, Army National Guard. The National Guard is different than the U.S. Army. U.S. Army uh, mission is to serve inside and outside the nation. The, the Michigan Army National Guard is limited to service in the state of Michigan mm -hmm. uh, solely, uh, with some exceptions if needed in emergencies. It's very limited use. So the National Guard in Michigan is limited to Michigan. So when we saw the team, uh, the head of the unit was of an, a Palestinian origin. Uh, and then uh, uh, we were uh, 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 gratified to meet uh, the first Yemeni American uh, 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 woman, young lady in hijab, uh, serving in the uh, Michigan uh, Army National Guard. And when people were talking to her, they were like amazed, entertained that a woman in hijab, she's the only one in the Michigan Army uh, National Guard uh, of Yemeni origin service. We looked at the team of the Michigan Department of Correction. There were also two Yemeni Americans who were part of the team. If you look at the agencies around, I will tell you 50%, if not 60% of the people who were working there representing these agencies were Arab Americans and Muslim Americans, from the CPP to the Border Patrol to uh, DHS to, um, uh, you know, different police departments from Troy to Garden City to every everybody. It, it was a show of diversity and inclusion uh, that, that uh, really served uh, uh, as an eye opener and an invitation that these agencies are there they are uh, offering, there are jobs available to those who are interested and they still can pursue it, they still can apply. And if we can help in any possible way, uh, they can call us and uh, we will not be hesitant to help. Again, this is for certain people, for certain segment of people who are interested in this nature uh, uh, of jobs. And we 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 only provided the resource. We only provided the opportunity, and eventually, it's uh, people' decision how to utilize it and how to take advantage of it. What have you learned from this uh, from this job fair? So, if you're gonna do it again, it can be better. 
Well, definitely, I, I would say it, it needs more. Uh, uh, we were hoping for better attendance, more attendance. Although, uh, Khalil, when I talk to the different agencies, um, I asked them, was it worth it to you? How was the interactions, etc.? All of them, they were happy. All of them, they were satisfied. All of them, they felt that they had a great time, a fruitful time. They learned and they uh, provided the information and they were happy that they did not waste uh, their time. It was a fruitful day for them. Now, later I learned that the way they measure it is not by how many people come and apply to them because they've been part of different job fairs and maybe, you know, they spend the day uh, they maybe have five or 10 people come uh, to talk to them or try to inquire. And uh, during this job fair, I think over 200 people came and uh, they, uh, the agencies and police departments, especially those who came from far away, uh, they were satisfied and they said that we had good traffic and they will do it again. That's, That's why... Great. That's good. Uh, uh, all of them, they're willing to do it. Uh, they are ready to do it. Uh, others who called us afterwards, uh, there are more entities that would like to be part of any future event. And here I put a call to any partner organization um, if they're willing to uh, uh, put together uh, such uh, an event, uh, uh, we uh, stand ready to help them. It doesn't have to be limited to the ICD and uh, uh, it's just a service to the community at large. It's not limited to any center here or there. It's for the community and the community at large. Well, yes, Matt, thank you to you and to the ICD for doing this. Uh, final words? Well, I, I, I first, uh, I, I want to wish you a happy birthday again. Thank and, you. Thank you. And, you know, I think... Uh, you you you're, you'll enjoy the long labor day weekend so yes. you have four days celebration okay <laughs> so that's a unique situation for you yeah. so i wish everybody uh, a happy safe and pleasant uh, uh, labor day uh, weekend i urge people to be mindful of covid um, 19 i know that uh, we're too relaxed i know that uh, uh, hopefully everybody uh, is behind it, but it's still there. It's coming back. Uh, a, a practice and extra precaution will not hurt. I'm not here to panic. I'm not here to be an alarmist, but I sure. think I ask people to be mindful of it, especially at big uh, gathering, because uh, following up with the news, uh, following up with the reports, uh, it's coming back somehow, some way, and it's only uh, right for each one of us uh, to be careful, especially when we have family gatherings and uh, more barbecues for four, uh, four days in a row for the Labor yeah, Day. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so happy birthday again. I thank, thank you, you, Khalil and Layla, for always including us. I uh, Through your program, I, ask, I thank everyone who came to the uh, job fair. Uh, <laughs> definitely, we thank all agencies and entities who were part of it. And again, we stand ready to, to help uh, uh, organize uh, any similar job fair if any partner organization see that of interest to them. Thank you, Ahmad, for all you do. And we thank you and the ICD for their sponsorship and then for, for all you do. I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you for being with us this morning and have a wonderful and safe weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Leila. Thanks, uh, uh, the, for the production team. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Ahmad, for being with us.